Pam, can you take roll call, please? Brown? Present. Johnson? Present. Fellenberger? Yes. Nolan? Here. Nair? Here. Babe? Here. Gorman? Here. All right, next we need a motion and a second to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. So moved. Second. Brown? Yes. Jansen? Yes. Ellenberger? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Benar? Yes. Rabe? My mic. Yes. <laughs> Dorman? <laughs> yes. All right, we have a flag being shown, and uh, we have some special guests who recorded the Pledge of Allegiance, so please, please join us in that as we play that tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Um, that was nice. <laughs> I vote we do that. They do it at every meeting. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> we have a few administrators with us. Uh, Dr. Stern, do you have any other um, visitors you'd like to welcome? I'd like to welcome uh, all the public and uh, staff and families that are watching our streaming uh, board meeting. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And for the administrators that are present, in case there's any questions related to their agenda items. Yes, great. Uh, normally we'd have public comment right now. We didn't receive any tonight, so we'll skip over this. And we'll move on to our action reports. And we need a motion and a second to and approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Dana, would you like to cover the financial report? Yes, yes. The revenue and expenditure reports are in your board packet. Revenues are trending currently at 49.09% compared to 44.76 a year ago. Expenditures are at 62.92% compared to 61.75% a year ago. This month, the district received impact fees of $98,000. $37.26 for 14 home starts. Transition fees came in at $12,910.02 this month. And then the bills payable report is typical for our months of May. Are there any questions for Dana? Nope. All right, Pam? Um, Johnson. Yes. Allenberger. Yes. Nolan. Yes. Nair. Yes. Green. Yes. Brown. Yes. Gorman. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we need a motion and second to discuss and approve the elementary student parent handbook for 2020, 2020 to 2021. Uh, Principal Shriver led the committee that reviewed it, and she's on the phone um, to answer any, any questions we may have. So I need the motion and second. Sorry. Who moved? Second. I'm sorry, who moved? Eric. Second was? Stuart. Stuart, thank you. Sometimes it's hard to tell. <laughs> okay. Any questions for Principal Shriver on this? Do you have anything to add, <laughs> Dr. Shriver? Um, no, if there's no questions, we are ready to um, proceed. Okay. okay. All right. Schellenberger? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Benar? Yes. Rabe? Yes. Brown? 
Yes. Johnson? Yes. Berman? Yes. Dr. Hogg led the committee that reviewed the middle school handbook. So we need a motion and second to discuss and approve that for the year 2020 to 2021. So moved. So moved. Second. Dr. Hogg's also on the phone. Do we have any questions for him? Or is there anything you'd like to add, Dr. Hogg? No, uh, like Dr. Schreiber, if there are no questions, we're ready to move forward with ours as well. All right. Nolan? Yes. Anar? Yes. Rabe? Yes. Brown? Yes. Hansen? Yes. John Berger? Yes. Gorman? Yes. And lastly, we'll talk about the or motion and second are needed for the high school student parent handbook for 2020 to 2021. Mr. Stroh is on the line to answer any uh, questions we may have regarding that. So moved. So moved. Second. Any questions for Mr. Stroh? Oh, you guys presented these so well last week. We have nothing, so. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rabe. Yes. Brown. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Ellenberger. Yes. Nolan. Yes. And Gorman. Yes. Next, the motion and second are required to discuss and approve the fuel bid for next school year. <laughs> Fuel bid specs were sent out to 10 companies, and that's recommended we go to, to the lowest bid. Uh, do you have more info on that, Dana? Or I guess after the motion, sorry. So Second. Um, just exactly what you said, 10 companies um, were sent information. Two of them were new to us this year. Um, four companies turned in the bids. Um, the, the bottom three, the lowest bidders, um, were all within $500 of each other. So it was really, really, really close this year. So um, that's always nice to see. Al Warren Company, oil company, was the winner. They, they were the lowest price bidder. And then you should have all the summary recaps. And then um, it looks like we gave you last year's information as well. Was there anything that was surprising in the total cost from this? No, it's pretty typical year after year. It's the same. Um, there's, um, it was, there were the two new people that we um, added, only one of them actually submitted. So um, it was kind of weird that someone was reaching out and didn't turn anything in. So I don't know if they didn't know where we were located. And, um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's nice to see that we, we at least get at least, you know, four so we have some comparison. And, and the fact that they were so, so close. It's it's sad for the the losers, but mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Pam. Red. Yes. Brown. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Ellenberger. Yes. Nolan. Yes. Benner. Yes. Gorman. Yes. All right, we need a motion and second to discuss and approve the paper bid for next year for 2020 to 2021. So moved. So move. Second. Okay. The, I have a question. Paper, oh, sorry. The paper okay. bid was sent out to seven different companies. We did have. Um, we received bids from three companies. Veritive Paper was the lowest responsible bidder. And they they won the bid by a little over $135. That's how mm -hmm. close it was. Um, <coughs> our companies gave us two options, option A and option B. Option A is uh, the regular bright white paper. Option B uh, was a paper that contained more pulp and turned color over time. Uh, but since we have to maintain records for so long, um, it made sense to stay with option A. Uh, 
Uh, how much how much paper do we have left as a result of not being in the building for the last nine weeks? We still have quite a bit of paper left. That's why this order is so much smaller. Um, like this total order is forty seven thousand, where last year's paper order was over seventy thousand. Okay. Who is the supplier of this last year, Todd? Um, last year, Pam, wasn't it Midland Paper Corporation that had the bid? Okay. Yes, last year was Midland. It seems like we go back and forth between Midland and Narrative quite a bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we're, we've been happy with both companies. Uh, we've even been happy with, uh, with even a couple of the companies who haven't bid but would have um, received the bid in previous years. So, But Midland is typically... Midland and Veritiv seem to be the two most competitive recently. Interesting. Any other questions? All right, Pam. Brown. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Ellenberger. Yes. Nolan. Yes. Denier. Yes. Rabe. Yes. Gorman. Yes. Next, the second are required to discuss and approve the Mid Valley Special Education Classroom Use Agreement. This is an annual resolution. I believe Dr. Stern might have more information on this. So moved. Second. So, um, as President Gorman said, this is an annual resolution. Uh, the, the cost of the, the rental space for our various buildings and what we pay each other, we're all members of the cooperative. So it does it has not changed in years. It's the same exact uh, uh, fee that we're going to receive for the use of our classrooms at Central High School in Prairie Knowles that we received last year. And by the same token, our um, what we're paying in to use uh, the rooms in other school districts that are part of Mid Valley will be the same as well. All right. I don't think there's any questions, so Pam. Johnson? Yes. Sorry, had to unmute. Kellenberger? <laughs> yes. Nolan? Yes. Denar? Yes. Rabe? Yes. Brown? Yes. Gorman? Yes. All right, our last action item. Uh, we need a motion and second to discuss and approve the resolution to modify graduation requirements for the 2019 to 2020 school year to align with the emergency rules established by ISBE. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, the resolution is included in your board packet. Um, and Dr. Mangan was working with our legal counsel to get that together. Dr. Mangan, do you have anything else to share regarding this resolution? Just that the resolution only pertains to our 12th grade students. We did not make adjustments for other grades within the district. The resolution uh, looks to make adjustments on all of the state required courses for the second semester of the 12th grade year uh, based on the governor's executive order uh, to reduce the rate of the rate of the one semester of their 12th grade year for graduation purposes. What if it gets in the way of kids who had planned on graduating in December? Is there any allowance given to that? For juniors that plan to graduate next year for December? Correct. Correct. We have not made an allowance for that through this resolution, no. Okay. We can sure look at that for next year if we have students that have and impede them. Yeah, I just, I know we it's not a ton, but again, for those who it might affect, kids plan ahead for that usually, so. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Esther? Nope. Right. Burger? Yeah. Nolan? Yes. Tanar? Yes. Rabe? Yes. Brown? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Captain Gorman? Yes. We have a few things for information. Uh, Principal Schreiber created a video clip that highlights areas for Prairie View to celebrate and share with the board the next steps toward continuous improvement. 
and she has a presentation. Good evening, Board of Education, Dr. Stern and Dr. Mongan. We are excited to present our presentation tonight. Dr. Mongan, thank you for the opportunity to lead Prairie View Grade School. Throughout the year, we have had many celebrations, accomplishments, and surprises, including our new way of learning, teaching, and leading in our current situation. We have amazing staff that have supported our students through academics and social and emotional learning, as well as their colleagues. Our school year started with an annual staff meeting where we had a rock, paper, scissors challenge, which brought laughter and fun to begin our school year together. The character committee developed our building-wide expectations. We kicked off the year with three assemblies to teach and model what these look like at Prairie View. Our amazing teachers created videos in common areas, such as the bathroom, playgrounds, and hallway to show appropriate behavior. These expectations, be respectful, be responsible, and be safe, are posted throughout the building and are reiterated each morning in our Coyote Commitment Pledge. Our character committee teamed up with Kate Vinson to create the attention getter Coyote Up signal. To gain student attention, the staff member says Coyote Up while making the hand signal and the students repeat it back. The visual, audible, and mobile signal aligns with the stoic training that Kate has introduced to us and continues to provide professional development to our staff to support classroom management. Acts of kindness are the norm at PV. Through the Kindness Rocks project, every student created a kindness rock to support anyone needing a motivational boost. In addition, the BDI and Kind Bulletin Board was created at which students and staff stand in place of the I to show that they are the I in kind. We worked with our technology team, instructional coaches, and librarian to efficiently pass out Chromebooks to our students. Our PTO had a successful coyote crawl where students walked laps around the school and raised $11,000 to be used in our library renovations. We kicked off our Hunter's Reading Madness Challenge with an exciting tug-of-war competition, and our annual Family Literacy Night was revamped this year as a STEAM night and included Fermilab's own Mr. Freeze. Even a blizzard couldn't stop our Halloween parade, which was moved inside due to snow. Thank you, Mrs. Barr. In addition, we had our author, Aaron Reynolds, visit Music Assembly, Veterans Day Assembly, where our third grade students modeled a book on America's table, acknowledging the servicemen and women absent from returning home. World Kindness Day to honor Mr. Rogers and Principal Day. Kindergarten had a celebration with a special man in their life and a Thanksgiving feast. Early childhood students performed a holiday concert for their families and first and second grades participated in their giving mall, which our Prairie View families were generous in collecting items such as hats, coats, canned goods, and pet supplies for different organizations during the holiday season. Fourth grade had incorporated a book tasting afternoon to promote reading. Fifth grade had a STEAM project. Our fourth annual talent show was presented by our PTO with over 80 student acts, teachers, and lunchroom staff. We celebrated Career Day, Character Book Day, and Dr. Seuss Day. We are proud of our students and staff and community for the commitment to our Prairie View School with all the amazing activities. Our continuous work as a school improvement team focused on technology with incorporating Canvas, which was an intricate part of remote learning. Common vocabulary across the grade levels, speaking and listening to enhance our students' communication skills, while implementing our new math resource in Math and Focus. Our math coaches provide a year-long professional development for our educators in assisting with implementation. The math coaches created lessons, techniques for questioning and discussions, and modeled lessons within the classroom. We continuously collaborate as teams with service providers and across the grade levels during Tuesday's teams meetings, which provide time to discuss a variety of school improvement areas. As we focus on our goals for the 2020-2021 school year, we will continue to enhance our instructional practices, incorporate technology, writing rubrics, and collaboration to better understand our students' areas of success and areas for growth. We would like to thank two educators that will be retiring at the end of the school year, Ms. Kathy Byrne and Mrs. Mary Beth Hagberg. We are grateful for their service to Central 301 and Prairie View Grade School. Thank you for your dedication and time. 
Lastly, we have had many families praise our educators at Prairie View for their lessons during remote learning and even place praise on their garage door. We believe Prairie View rocks. Thank you again for the opportunity in leading Prairie View. Are there any questions? Thank you for putting that together. It's great. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Principal Gerard has also created a video clip that highlights HPT. Uh, he's going to share that with the board next. Good uh, evening, school board. <laughs> I'm excited to share our school celebrations and next steps at HPT. Enjoy. I have the pleasure of sharing some of the exciting school improvement celebrations that have taken place over the course of the school year at Howard B. Thomas Grade School. If you're asking yourself, hey, what's new at HPT this year? I'll tell you, it's been an exciting year. Communication between the HBT admin team and staff was a primary goal this year. Mrs. Moretti and I attempted to streamline our communication with HBT staff members through Canvas by creating a one-stop shop for staff members to receive important information, schedules, documents, and forms. Guided reading and differentiation. Based upon conversations held at the admin and building level on guided reading and small group instruction in ELA, we determined that it was important for us to focus on differentiation. To help accomplish this task and to ensure that we are meeting our students' instructional needs, we asked teachers to closely monitor the progress their students were making in guided reading. This practice helped us determine which students were continuing to make progress and which students could possibly benefit from reteaching or an intervention. Math instruction. This school year saw the rollout of our new math resource, Math and Focus. Our teachers received valuable monthly professional development from our new math instructional coaches. This school year, our teachers began placing emphasis on utilizing concrete, abstract, and pictorial models during their math instruction. Our teachers benefited from receiving additional math manipulatives to use to help teach concepts to their students during math. Teachers also included number talks and focus boards as part of their math instruction to help them visualize the concepts being taught to them. Data meeting structure. This school year, our data review meetings were revamped to include time for teachers to meet individually with the HPT admin and student services team to discuss student progress and focus on tier one support and differentiation. Teachers appreciated having the opportunity to have focused conversations on student growth. Classroom behavior and expectations. Classroom behavior and expectations continue to be an ongoing focus at HPT we have seen positive trends in behavior by utilizing incentives such as our twister tickets and our terrific twister certificates to recognize students following our school-wide expectations. Next school year, we are excited to begin using the Stoic Behavior Framework, which stands for Structure, Teach Expectations, Observe, Interact Positively, and Correct Fluently as a Tier 1 intervention across the board for all of our students. Looking towards the 2020-2021 school year, our teachers will be uploading common assessments for all subject areas and grade levels into BYOC and will up, be updating curriculum scope and sequence in OTIS. We'll also be moving towards MTSS, an intervention model that addresses both academics and social emotional learning. Unique to HBT. This year, we celebrated Grandparents Day in September and welcomed over 400 excited grandparents to spend time with our students. Pennies for Pumpkins. Each school year, our second grade team encourages their students to, to decorate a pumpkin based upon their favorite storybook character. And the pumpkins are displayed and they can earn a penny per vote based upon their popularity. The money is then collected for a fundraiser, then donated to an HBT family in need. We have a close relationship with the Burlington Fire Department, and after spending a week with our students, they give a special fifth grade or fifth graders 
a ride home would simplify the HBT care code. A huge shout out goes to the HBT staff and Central 301 Transportation Department for their communication and collaboration as we survived the communication of the route, the construction of the roundabout. Rerouting 14 buses was no small feat for sure. And lastly, during this unprecedented time, I think we all have learned that school is much more than a building. It's the people inside it and the magic that occurs through interaction that make HPT a special place to work and learn. Thank you for letting us share a little bit about HPT. You all have an open invitation to come and visit us anytime. Thank you and let's go Twisters. Thank you, Principal Gerard. You're welcome. Any questions? All right, have a great evening. Thanks, you too. Thank you. All right, Business Manager Flu is proposing that we work with Nadia Energy Advisors. So um, do you have more information for us on that, Dana? Um, just a, a little recap of kind of how I came across this. Um, I was watching a bunch of webinars on um, all this COVID stuff, and the, these people had um, done a presentation. Um, I reached out to the Kane CSBOs, and West Aurora actually did use this vendor for theirs um, and saved them over 600000 for the next three years. So I, I set up a meeting with her and um, Director Polloway. We listened to um, her, uh, Nanya's, um, their pitch. And um, basically, they're an independent contractor, and they facilitate electricity and natural gas bids for schools and for other other people. But um, the lady um, Becky, she is the one that handles schools. Um, and basically, this this service is like a eBay in reverse. Where on eBay, you you try to get a high bid, and whoever has the highest bid is who you sell it to. This one is whoever has the lowest bid. Um, so they'll seek out sealed bids from suppliers and then give us kind of a, a price range for the price to beat. And then from there, they'll um, invite all the licensed suppliers in the state of Illinois, not just the few that reach out to me. So our pool of participants will be increased. Then they select the date and the time to perform like a lot of this live auction, which is completely transparent. It's time stamped and anybody who wants to watch can watch. So for about 20 minutes, suppliers will see what the price to beat is. And then they can submit multiple bids to reduce their margins to try to win our business. Um, typically, 10 to 14 suppliers participate. Um, savings can be anywhere from 5% to 10%, um, hoping for more. Nanya is um, paid directly from the supplier. Um, so basically tonight in, in, the, in the package, you'll see all the information of the information that they had sent to us um, and kind of getting approval to allow them to perform the service for us. At our next board meeting, I'll ask for permission to allow either myself or Dr. Stern to accept the low bid from the live auction um, if all of our thresholds are met. And then um, our next board meeting is June 15th. So on June 16th, if this is all good, we will um, hold that live auction and then lock in our price. And hopefully um, we can lock in at a lower rate than what our um, what it might be in the fall. Our, our electricity is not up until November. Um, I just want to kind of capitalize on the savings that we can hopefully get now um, before stuff starts happening in the future. So that's okay. great. To look into that. So. Anybody have any questions for Dana? All right. Well, thank you again. I hope it all works out. <laughs> and well, just one more thing. West Aurora is way bigger than us. So their savings is going to be a lot more than what we would. Um, I mean, we don't even spend 600,000. Um, ours, I asked Genoa Kingston kind of does this for their natural gas and they said that they save them about 20,000. So if we kind of compare ourselves to Genoa's size, um, it could be, you know, 15, 20, $25,000 in savings, hopefully, so. Right. 
All right. Next, we have an update on remote learning. Uh, Dr. Mangan, can you share some results of your survey? Yeah, so before I uh, share the results of the survey in your board package should be on now summarizing the survey in addition to the actual colored slides that you can take a look at. But prior to that, I just want to give a shout out to um, the transportation department, uh, our paraprofessionals and our administration um, for successfully actually doing the bag tag and drop. Um, for all of our buildings, we're able to clean all lockers, including the gym lockers in one day with our paraprofessionals and our transportation and then load them on school buses and have them delivered the next day. Um, overall, we received very minimal complaints. We just did one or two um, regarding some art projects that may have gotten um, crushed, uh, but otherwise, uh, for the most part, we had great success in the bag tag and drop. So kudos to uh, Pam and her team. In transportation, they did a really great job. Our administration, our paraprofessionals who assisted us in getting that stuff safely home to our students. Um, the summary of survey results, partly what we wanted to do as we went into remote learning in an uh, attempt to have a good vision on what we're doing well, areas that we could work on um, for instructional practices, as well as assisting our parents and our students. We did a survey week one, and then we gave the exact same survey in week four to see how we are adapting and um, what the changes that we tried to shift administratively and talking with teachers, how did we perform um, overall. In the summary, you'll see that for the most part, communication um, is being seen as a very positive for both teaching staff and for the uh, district in general, in terms of parents. We're in the high 90s uh, in terms of the three, fours, and fives for both week one and week two. Uh, we did go down 2.5% in week four, um, I think partially because of the grading process and trying to figure out how we we're going about um, attempting to do the grading for all three different levels, elementary, middle school, and high school. Um, overall, for the responding parents, uh, approximately 70% of the responding parents felt that work assigned was just right during week one. Um, and it dropped a little bit to 64% in week four. Um, partly I'm wondering if that's, they're getting um, frustrated with trying to figure this all out. Week four, kids are starting to lose motivation. We're trying to keep them going. Um, something we definitely want to take a look at. Um, we saw a 5% shift move to from the just right to too much work. So uh, parents were starting to feel like maybe we were handing out too much work by week four. So something we want to take a look at in the event that we continue in the remote learning process um, for the fall. Um, we, response time was one of the things we wanted to make sure we had good response time to parents and to students from our staff. It showed that we had a gain from week one to week four. Uh, about two thirds of our parents felt that uh, the response was within 24 hours in week one, up to 72% of parents receiving responses in week four. We saw a good gain there as well. And then consistently across all groups, uh, we saw the most used learning tools that we currently utilize and where we put a lot of our dollars into and trainings into uh, was Canvas, Google email, and any Google product that we have, whether that be docs, sheets, slides, um, the Google Meets in terms of face-to-face -face and Canvas conferencing. Um, one of the challenges that our parents really saw and um, they were facing is um, really dealing with time management and establishing those routines at home, trying to complete the assignments uh, along with their students without having to help them. They felt that there were unclear expectations for assignments and understanding the assignments and how the assignments would be graded. Um, however, all these categories did see um, a positive decrease from week one to week four. So we did make a large adjustment administratively to make contact with um, staff members. And it did look like it paid off as we saw um, that we had a nice decrease in those areas. Um, in the middle school, high school survey, we also did students in middle school and high school and then students in grades three through five. The students grade three through five, there wasn't much difference between what they gave us and what the parents gave us. So I did not do a large summary there. But for the middle school, high school, overall, they felt the communication was better in week one than it was in week four. Uh, we dropped slightly there, but we were still fairly high, about 90% in the three, four, and five category. Um, Again, the amount did work, did shift from uh, being just right in terms of percentage to too much from week one to week two, but very, very slightly, about 1.3%. Um, and then the response rate for students, we had a 10% increase within 24 hours between week one and week four. So we got a much better response rate coming from our teachers to our students 
as we moved along within the remote learning process. So that was good to see. Um, and again, the students faced um, challenges in certain areas where the largest um, decreases we saw was time management and establishing routines, um, unclear expectations for assignments, understanding the assignment, understanding how assignments will be graded. But the largest challenge um, decrease for students was understanding how assignments will be graded. We had a decrease of 22.8. Again, that was an area of focus for our administration to work with their staff to help students understand how assignments were going to be graded. And we saw that about 20, almost a 25% decrease. So students felt that they were getting a good, clean understanding of that um, by week four. The educator survey for week four, our respondents was only 129 students in the first one we had well over 350. So almost half, a little bit less than half percent of um, the students or the educators responded. Overall, though, we did see uh, improved confidence levels of teachers teaching in the remote learning environment. Um, it definitely increased between week one and week four for both lesson design and student engagement and how they were feeling confident regarding that, as well as how they were uh, feeling confident to assist their own peers in the remote learning process. And that one actually improved by about 15% in terms of feeling more comfortable helping their own peers. Um, an area that decreased in how teachers were feeling was the area of support and collaboration, however. This one, we may need to get a little bit more feedback, figuring out what it is they felt they needed in terms of support and that collaboration piece and what was shifting there. Uh, we had a 10% loss there, which of course we, we don't want to see that. And then the area of learning new skills uh, in terms of technology and blended instructions increased substantially by about 12.6%. So feeling much, much more comfortable in this environment, which is good to know um, in terms of if we end up going at the same rate in the fall. Um, the area of biggest challenge for our teachers is really how do we help uh, get that child engagement up and what can we do to really help them be engaged in that learning process. Um, we saw a 9.4% increase from week one and week four in the area of this. Um, so it's definitely something we need to consider as we look to move into the fall and we look to say if we don't end up coming back, how do we help with that engagement and making sure that um, we're getting students engaged in that process. Um, but overall, I think we, we saw some pretty good gains in surveys. Any questions regarding uh, the process of remote learning or anything that you yourself experienced as parents? I just hope they revamp the whole remote learning uh, mandate. I mean, student engagement can go up if the students know they have to do it. I think that would immediately help things. Um, and yeah, it's just the, the common sense things, you know, if teachers are required to do X and X, students will be more engaged, everything will be, everyone will be held to a greater accountability, I guess. That's one of my concerns as well. I think that's the idea, um, and obviously we were all flying by the seat of our pants, but I really think that um, the board and administration in conjunction with our curriculum folks and our uh, building administrators, we need to come up as we think about, you know, figuring out how, as we, you know, roll into contract, like what are we gonna do if we're in this again for a whole semester, for goodness sake. Um, we can't say just do your best and if you tried something, you pass. So how do we have a different level of accountability, all levels? Um, at the administrator level, at the teacher level, support level, parent level, st student level, and I think that's going to be the biggest challenge here. I'm still optimistic if we move to phase three in June that there's a good chance we'll be able to um, start the school year in person. Um, and if we do that, I think we're more likely to, you know, have more days in the class in the school altogether than if we start out of it. But we need to have a pretty solid plan, different than what we did this last nine weeks, as far as requirements and firm expectations. Yeah, I think what we found was the, the, the more we had face-to-face -face instruction, whether it be through Google Meets or some kind of direct instruction from the teacher giving a lesson and then actually staying there for questions, the more engagement we received. So that will be an important, important element that we work with um, our union folks to try to get that opportunity um, for our students. And to be very clear, I, I don't, we are not in the minority with that. I mean, you know, with the districts of students that I come into contact with and surely, you know, you guys at the building level in your communication with other schools, 
I mean, I have, you know, my girls had at least two meetings a week in second grade from HBT. Um, they chose to participate at times. We did not force them to participate. That was a choice that we made as parents because they're not comfortable on camera, but they weren't doing any teaching, right? It was all just kind of checking in. So how do we do the synchronous learning? And, and but that is the same as ever the district. I have parents who have kids in all levels in our area, especially in Mid Valley districts, who have not had any direct communication with video with their teachers. It's actually quite common to not have had any communication. That's correct. And I think we did a good job in terms of after we, we saw our survey results from week one, we did revamp and worked with mm -hmm. uh, teachers and administration. And I do think we saw a good increase in the number of video, face to face, more connection for purpose of instruction, not for just checking in, especially at the right. middle school and high school level. All righty. Well, thanks for those results and uh, putting all that together, Dr. Morgan. I'm trying to straighten out my neck to go on to the next information item. Uh, we have summer capital projects update. Uh, Director Poloway is on the line, I believe. Yeah, good evening. Um, the major updates that we talked about months ago was our paving projects, um, which because of the situation, we have been able to begin at Prairie Knolls and the district office. Um, pending some dry weather, we'll be able to continue with those. Uh, the weather's kind of been hampering the starts to those, but um, we'll, those will be ongoing projects. And then after we close out the school, year, probably early June, we'll begin with uh, the Central High School, Central Middle School, and Howard B. Thomas lots. And, on our plans and coordinating with transportation to get those uh, lots started. Um, we'll continue with a lot of our other painting and flooring upgrades and updates that we do annually. Um, we'll be adding some uh, the bullet resistant film to the east side schools that's slated to be done this summer um, and just various other small projects but definitely the paving project is our is our priority for the summer. Is there any questions about anything? Well, oh, it doesn't seem like it. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. All right, that wraps up our open session. I need a motion and a second to adjourn to go into executive session. So, so moved. Second. All right, we will return after we complete executive session. Uh, board members, we can take like a five minute break. I'm sorry. Jeff Kellenberger made the motion and then Chrissy okay. seconded it. And was it unanimous? Sure. For whoever was left in the room. <laughs> I'll just take a quick roll call. Brown? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Kellenberger? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Pinar? Yes. Reed? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Now approval of the personal report. Motion by? Eric. Jeff. Moved. Second. Second. By? Eric and Jeff. Pick one. Okay. <laughs> Johnson? Yes. Tellenberger? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Hunter? Yes. Reed? Yes. Brown? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Is there a motion and a second to adjourn? So no, moved. No, no. Second. We all motion and second. <laughs> everybody. Let's put everybody. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We're adjourned. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Have a good night. Thank you.